Hey guys, welcome back to Me, Myself, and Die Supplemental. I am Trevor DeVal, and uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about a couple of supplements that I used in the campaign quite a bit, supplements that I think are really, really great. We're just going to have a quick little dive into each one and see why they're so awesome. Um, so thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Uh, and if you want to support the show, every time you buy something off of one of the drive through RPG links in the notes below, uh, you can help support the show that way as as we are a um, an affiliate of drive through RPG. So uh, there is that. So first one we're looking at here is the GM's Miscellany Wilderness Dressing System. Neutral resource right there. So much to talk about these supplements. I'm not going to have time to do a deep dive. I'm just going to have a, a quick little skim. So if we look at our contents here, basically what you get in the Wilderness GM's Miscellany is ideas to flesh out the world. Anything that takes place in the world, in the wilds, whether that's a campsite or a castle or a ruins or people they run into like folk, bandits, travelers, that kind of stuff if they're traveling by land versus if they're traveling by sea. The detail here is amazing. It's all just ideas to help spur your imagination. So if you look at the contents here, so we've got uh, one, two, three, four major sections. Features and events, folk, by land and by sea, okay? Features and events, as you can see, campsite, minor events, features, small castles, large castles, now uh, castle dressing, names. We go down to ruins, caves, and then weather, my, my personal favorite. So let's say that the players camp for the night and you as a GM want to add some flavor to the campsite without it being like some adventure necessarily. You just want to give the sense of a real breathing, living world. That's when you'd go to, to these tables. So for example, you know, you roll percentiles when they make camp and you get, I don't know, 12. Sounds of two small animals fighting in the undergrowth reaches the guard's ears. After a few minutes, the sounds cease. Is that an adventure? Maybe. It doesn't have to be. You can pepper these in every now and then just to sort of remind the players that they're not the only ones in the world, that there are other things happening and that not everything has to do with them, right? Uh, especially if you're running a, a sort of traditional sandbox game, you these are hugely valuable tables for that. You don't want to use too many of these because then the players are going to start to think, well, is there anything about this? <laughs> which, which are adventures and which are just like flavor stuff. Uh, use your discretion as a GM, obviously, but I find these incredibly uh, valuable. The list goes on here, as you can see. Uh, castle names, castle dressing. Who is the lord of the castle here? Ruins, caves, and then extreme weather. What I did in Me, Myself, and Die is I just rolled a d20, and the higher the number, the better the weather was. The reason why I do that is because, for me, weather is man versus environment. In sort of dramatic writing, you're taught that there are three major types of conflicts. Man versus himself, man versus man, and man versus nature. Weather is a great opportunity to put obstacles in front of your characters that deal with man versus nature. So if we go to weather, this is my my personal favorite here. The rainstorm description. Uh, sheets of lightning rage at the storm center. Less than a second later, the ground shakes with the sound of thunder. That's a specific type of storm, as opposed to down here. Uh, the sun shines brightly through uh, uh, during a cloud burst produced by a single storm cloud. Several more clouds drench the land in scattered patches. This is all just beautiful, wonderful flavor that really allows the, the character, or the player in this case, to immerse into that world. I love that so much. Brainstorm events, different things that can happen that might trigger adventure ideas or just little interesting things. Lightning strikes a tree and causes it to topple. The tree falls on one or more of the PCs with deadly force. Now the players have to deal with that obstacle in the middle of the storm. Super, super cool stuff and totally random. And then you've got hooks and complications. Uh, these are things that, that could be adventures, but not necessarily. Um, thieves steal a vital document or other treasure under the cover of a driving rainstorm. Evidence points to one of their number possessing the ability to manipulate the weather. That's an adventure hook right there. And all you have to do is roll that up and boom, start improvising and away you go. This book is full of that stuff. Back to the contents page. Folk, so this is if you need to generate bandits on the fly or travelers like peddlers, merchants, bards, minstrels. These tables allow you to instantly come up with people that your players might meet on the road. And then specific, uh, specific events by land, you know, what, what kind of region are they in? Are they in borderlands, deserts, forests, hills, mountains? And then by sea, are they on the coast? Are they on a boat? And then there's this really cool little... Um, this really cool little addendum at the very end about pirate ships. Designing a ship, a ship's name, a ship's description, uh, uh, what, what do the pirates know, uh, you know, what's their flag look like, just really, really cool stuff. So that is the GM Wilderness supplement. Really cool if you're doing any kind of exploration-based game, if you want to uh, include a lot of what may seem like minute details, but are in fact details that um, really 
really flesh out the world, make it feel like a vibrant living place. Next, we go to the dungeon. This is the dungeon dressing uh, resource. Really cool section on dungeon design to start off here. Things to keep in mind when designing a dungeon. Is it just some crazy wizard who built a dungeon to lure adventurers in and so he could so they could kill his pet monsters? Yeah, maybe, but there are way more reasons for a dungeon to exist and that's this is sort of like an 18 page essay that goes into that really really useful if you want to lend a uh, sense of verisimilitude to your uh, fantasy campaigns and then we get into the dressing itself there's more that i could possibly go into this is random ideas to dress your dungeons be it with altars or captives they might encounter or chests there's a concealed door well what kind of what kind of door is it what's its characteristic and appearance What's its dressing and features? Dungeon entrances, or the names, the names of a dungeon. Uh, the different naming uh, conventions that you can use for parts of dungeons, or the dungeon itself, or whatever the case may be. Illumination, what's in a goblin's pocket? You can roll in this table, you get the idea. There's so, so much of use in this book, and if you are uh, a big dungeon crawl uh, GM, this is a really, really useful supplement to have. And at the very end, they give you a little, little riddle section here, which is kind of cool. Riddles tend to be a staple in old school uh, dungeon play, and so this is uh, this is a little section to to help you come up with riddles of various stripes. So that is that one. Just to grab something at random, let's say we go down here. Uh, here we go. Miscellaneous features carpets and rugs. This generates interesting characteristics for your rugs. You run into a, a you, you enter a room in a dungeon. There's a rug on the ground. A large sickly green rug covered in glyphs and weird geometric shapes dominates this chamber. Characters experience a vague sense of unease when they walk across the rug. What is that? It is up to you as a GM to figure that out. Love it, love it, love it. It is adventure seeds. It's just random ideas. It's really cool. So that is um, that is the dungeon design. We are going to go on now to Urban Dressing 1 and 2. Now I should say as well that there are other titles in the Raging Swan Press uh, library. These are the four that I used in the show, so that's why I'm covering them here. This one is super cool. I use it quite a bit. Probably my favorite aspect of this whole supplement is the very first thing. Naming locations. You've got five tables that you can mix and match to come up with names for virtually anything. Stores, taverns, ships, you name it. It's really, really, really fantastic. And then again, look at this. We get into alleyways, docks, graveyards, guild halls, markets, shrines, sages, temples, theaters. Traders and craftsmen, the watch, who are the sergeants on the watch? You know, what? Uh, what's their specialities? All this kind of stuff here. Wizards Towers, and then taverns, a whole section on taverns. How to create really highly detailed taverns. You can because the tavern is more than just a name, it's also its staff, it's what's on the menu, it's the sights and sounds of the tavern, it's possibly even uh, what kind of brawl is happening in the tavern. And then they have a bunch of uh, sample taverns you can just grab immediately plunk into your game setting. Um, I just want to have a quick look at the naming convention section here because I find it so useful. Five tables here, descriptive creatures, people, objects, and other. There are so many ways to use these tables. Again, I don't have time to go into all of them, but at its most basic, let's say you want to name a ship, okay? Well, uh, one possibility for naming a ship, that we'll go down here, is uh, roll once on table B, creatures, or table C, people. And once on table E other. So let's do that. So let's let's take table C people and we roll a 47. 47 is Inquisitor. Okay. And then we're gonna roll on table E other, which is down here. So Inquisitor is our first thing. We rolled 52. The Inquisitor's Leap. That's the name of a ship. Oh, that gives me so many ideas right now. The Inquisitor's Leap. I want to keep that for something because that's so cool. Right away it conjures up all kinds of adventure possibilities and NPC possibilities and stuff like that just with two rolls and tables, it's fantastic. If we go now to Urban 2, this one gets a little more in the weeds in terms of specific towns and stuff like this. So we have here Borderland Towns versus Bridge Towns, Decadent Towns, Elven Town, Dwarven Town, Mining Town, Pirate Towns, Plague Towns. Oh, let's not have anything on Plague Towns in 2020, shall we? <laughs> Port Towns, Slums, Trade, War Torn Towns, the whole bit. Really, really cool stuff. If you're looking for more specific information, we'll just jump to something at random here. This is a Dwarven Town, Folk of Interest. So you're in a Dwarven Town, and you want to know as a GM, what is, what is an interesting person they run across in the street, let's say? Well, you come along here, and you roll 44. So you get Asbol Garson, a lawful neutral male half-elf fighter too, so that's obviously a D&D &D reference, has served as a private bodyguard for decades now and is proud to claim he's never lost a client. Random NPC, boom, just like that. Or let's say we flip down here to Pirate Town Businesses. 
you're in a you're in a pirate town and uh, you're looking for shops and off to your left you see something called Grubber's Fishmonger is run by one of two brothers and this one prefers living by hook and line sells bait tackle and even deep sea fishing lessons if you're if you've the coin now again not all of these are going to be instant adventure hooks that's not what this is necessarily for this is to add flavor and depth and variety to the worlds that you're creating for your players because it really gets a sense to the players that this is a, a vibrant world. I think it's so important. Not a lot of GMs are like that. Some of you out there couldn't care less about that. Some of you want to get to the hack and slash. Some of you want to get to the dungeon to, you know, kill the monsters, take their stuff. That's perfectly valid. For me as a GM, though, I'm all about atmosphere. I'm all about NPCs who are interesting. I am all about atmosphere. I'm all about interesting plots in the background and all that kind of stuff. So this stuff works for me really, really, really well. And again, there's four books worth. Four, there is more stuff in these books that I can ever possibly hope to use, but I sure am glad that I have them. And if you are interested in them, I uh, would recommend that you go down to the links below and click on the Drive Through RPG links that correspond to this, or any of those links, because we are an affiliate to Drive Through RPG. So if you want to support the show, click on those links, and anything you buy through that link will uh, help us out a little bit. So that's it uh, for this episode, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, we're going to be talking about Une, or Une, or Une, or however you pronounce that, U-N-E. Um, it's a supplement that deals with NPC creation. I use it a million times in the show and in my various campaigns that I've run. Uh, really, really handy. It creates uh, not only NPCs, but also potentially what they want to talk to you about and how they might converse or conversate how they might conversate with you <laughs> anyway it's a really cool supplement we'll look at that next time until then thanks so much and we'll see you next time on me myself and i ciao for now